Hi, my name is Tom Field. We only have five minutes. We're going to move very fast. I want to show you how you can do science with your telescope and most any imaging camera, even just a DSLR. But rather than me talking about it, I'm going to interview some people. First is Tim Stone, who will talk about imaging and spectroscopy and the kinds of things that you could do yourself. So, Tim, what's your background in astronomy, and how did you get started in spectroscopy? Um, I've been a visual observer for many years, and I've also done uh, deep sky astrophotography for quite a number of years. And I wanted to expand my involvement in astronomy into something that was more scientific. So I looked at spectroscopy. Okay. And how hard was it for you to get started? Um, it was not difficult at all. It was surprisingly simple, in fact. Given that I already knew how to capture uh, images through a telescope, I put the grading on my camera, and away we went. Oh, okay. So, Tim, what was the first spectrum you captured, and what was it like? Um, I captured, the first spectrum I captured was Vega. I put the grading on the camera, I pointed it at Vega, I took a picture, and there was a spectrum. And I was blown away. <laughs> I was instantly hooked, instantly hooked. I couldn't wait to start taking more spectrums of more stars. Cool. What size telescope do you use, typically? Um, I have an 8-inch uh, F4 Schmidt Newtonian, an old thing from me, but I also have an 80-millimeter uh, ED refractor. Hey, Tim, so what kinds of things can you observe with spectra? You can observe the composition of stars. You can observe the composition of the atmospheres of planets, the composition of the sun. You can observe the redshift of quasars and galaxies um, and measure the cosmological expansion. You can do all kinds of neat things. Well, and so you have a PhD in astrophysics. Is that what you're saying? No, in fact, I don't. Uh, I, it, when you're doing this stuff, it, it naturally makes you curious, and you start reading, you start researching, and you start finding out what it is that you're looking at. So do you have any last words for people who are thinking maybe this is for them or maybe not? If you're an imager already, then you should just try this just for the fun of it. Um, if you're uh, if you're interested in in going way deeper in science, this can take you all the way into professional collaboration if that's what you want to do. Great, thanks so much. I appreciate it, Tim. So now we're going to hear from Lauren Harrington. So Lauren, how is it that you got interested in spectroscopy originally? Well, I've been interested basically since I first became interested in astronomy. But I used to think that I just wasn't going to be able to afford to do it until I was maybe, I don't know, 35 years old and a professional astronomer with free access to a big scope. Sure. And, and that's not the case, is it? What did you discover about how it is to do spectroscopy with your current gear? Well, uh, luckily, I discovered the star analyzer and the fact that you can put one of those star analyzers on a daub. So in the star analyzer, how hard was it to put it on your daub? Was there a lot of a mental gymnastics or hardware you had to build or what? No, not really. It's just in a filter cell, uh, like a planetary filter. And so I just screwed it on to the end of my camera and was able to see spectra that way, like almost immediately. What kind of camera are you using? Uh, I started out with first my DSLR and then later on uh, with a ASI 178mm, which is one of those little planetary guide cameras. In terms of the kinds of spectra you got, how hard was it to understand what you were seeing? Initially, you captured spectra, and then what were you looking at, and, and what, what kind of results were you getting? Initially, I was looking at a bunch of cool little spectral features that I did not know the name to, but uh -huh. fortunately, it turns out that there are some guides out there made for that kind of thing. In terms of uh, what you're going to be doing next, do you think that this is the kind of thing that you can continue to do? Is there enough of interesting objects and targets to look at that it'll keep you engaged for some time? Absolutely. I mean, there there's tens of thousands of stars in the sky within reach of my grading. So I'm going to be busy for a while. What's it been like to become a do-it-yourself scientist? You're actually capturing scientific data now. Are you learning a lot? And how are you doing that learning? Um, it's, it's quite the process. Uh, it's, it's enjoyable. It's fun to discover what I can do with equipment that I, I previously thought was not viable for science. Mm -hmm. Turns out it is just my little backyard Dobsonian. And it's just a lot of reading and looking at the preview screen as a spectrum goes past and going, wow, that looks so cool. <laughs> That's great. So what's it feel like to be a scientist? <laughs> uh, it feels Wait. like being a normal person, but cooler. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So isn't Lauren great? Listen, if you want to know more, go to the link at the bottom of the page. There's other videos, there's tutorials, there's all sorts of information. This is science that you can do.